So like the title suggests, I'm no longer going to be using Gatsby.js for any of my future projects. So this isn't a video meant to bash on Gatsby, say it's bad, or say that the developers are bad or anything. I just think that Gatsby is the wrong tool for most of its use cases. So what is Gatsby's most basic use cases? Well, Gatsby is a static site generator. I know it doesn't really advertise it as that in the marketing much anymore, but it's primarily used to build static websites or websites that don't really change much. Say like a blog, it only gets updated twice a week, or a content website for your friend's laundromat down the street. That's the basic use case. It's for these small websites with static content that don't really change much. Now, what makes Gatsby different than most other static site generators? So most static site generators will just give you plain HTML out. So you say, okay, I want this content on this page, this content on this page, and the static site generator goes through and turns those into HTML, puts the header at the top of each page, things like that. Make, makes like a long blog roll. So that's what a basic static site generator does, but Gatsby's a little bit different. So Gatsby uses React, and React is kind of like the building block of Gatsby.js. So React is really useful for building web interfaces that have a lot of moving parts and have a lot of interactivity to it. So if you're building a web application and you have a lot of moving parts that need to be constantly updated, then React is a really good fit for it. But the problem with Gatsby.js is they decided to use React with static site gen, which Static sites generally don't have a lot of interactivity or anything like that. This is my website. It's currently built with Gatsby, and there's actually no interactivity at all. This is just uh, basic text and images. It doesn't have any interactive UI elements or anything like that, or even any real animations. But the idea behind Gatsby is that, okay, React can be really useful in these contexts, so it can also be really useful for a static website. For example, if you click around my website, you'll notice that the page transition is really fast. It doesn't, it doesn't have to download a new HTML page from the server because it only downloads the initial page and then it kind of caches these pages in the background. If you look at what it does behind the scenes, whenever you load this website, it downloads a JSON file of all these different pages and the content inside them. So that's how it's able to load these really quickly. So basically, whenever you navigate to a Gatsby site, it starts off with just the static content. If you look inside the source code, uh, it just has static. It just has static HTML right here with all the text, and it has some CSS up here, and the image. So this looks like a normal website, a little bit scrunched up, but you know it's a normal website. But once it loads, Gatsby hydrates the website with React. So it basically turns it from a static website into a single page application. So this is basically now a React app. Instead of just static, instead of just static content with HTML and CSS, uh, it's using JavaScript to change the location in the URL, to load this page, to load up the images. This is all a JavaScript app, basically. And the problem with that is, okay, it loads all these things really quickly, and it optimizes images. So you're not serving some really big image that you're only using this much of. So it's only loading the image that you actually need. So things like that are useful. Like the elevator, the elevator pitch for Gatsby sounds really good. Okay, faster page load times, all this nice stuff, and you can build it in React. Okay, that sounds good. But the problem with Gatsby is it's just slow. So I know it advertises itself as fast in every way that matters, but there's no way that this is faster than just a static site with HTML and CSS and no JavaScript because if you look at when you initially load the page, it has to download all of these files, all of this JavaScript. This site, just the basic HTML and image, image is about 30 kilobytes, the text is about 5 kilobytes, but this downloads 230 kilobytes, so it's basically downloading 200 kilobytes of JavaScript on top of that. So all this JavaScript is powering it behind the scenes, turning it into a React app. But for a site as simple as that, it doesn't really make sense to use it. So I started to realize this doesn't really make any sense. Why do I need a complete React app for just this small portfolio website? So the reason why a lot of people use Gatsby is just because 
It's built with a lot of nice new technologies. For example, I'm a React developer. I make most of my money making React applications and React websites. So I like working in React. It's really nice to work in it, and I wanted to build my portfolio website in it too, you know? But it just doesn't make sense because it's not the right tool for the job. This is not an interactive website with a lot of moving parts that needs to be a React application. And the problem with Gatsby is that's most of the websites that are built with Gatsby. They're just simple blogs, maybe with a bit of JavaScript to make them more interactive, but that can all be done with just vanilla JavaScript. You don't have to break out this huge framework to do it. Another reason why I'm deciding not to use Gatsby anymore is it's just over-engineered for what it is. So making this simple website, okay, you'd think it'd be very easy to set up. You just run a script to turn it all into HTML, but with Gatsby and React, you're loading in a lot of different dependencies behind the scenes to make this thing all work. If you start a new Gatsby JS website, uh, just from scratch, you're looking at like hundreds of megabytes in your node modules folder before you even begin. So that's all these dependencies that have to work together. And the problem with that is it's just too many points of failure. So with Gatsby, I actually had a lot of problems where I would be trying to build the website and it literally worked fine last week when I was building it, but then I deleted the folder and I had to download it back from GitHub and then I tried installing everything again and building it and it just wouldn't work. It would give me some weird error and I'd have to track it down and there weren't really any good solutions for it so I just had to make a bunch of workarounds to actually make it work. And I ran into this problem a lot and sometimes it was just some weird errors like I deployed it to my server and I tried to build it on my server and this one plugin wouldn't work so I had to downgrade my version of NPM and Node in order to make it work. So I had to come up with all these weird workarounds to make it work in every different environment. Even something like Netlify, which is basically advertised as like a one-click deployment, okay, one click and you're done. I had to fix a bunch of weird bugs with that because the node version wasn't working properly. And if you think that's bad, then the plugins are also a problem with Gatsby. So it's got a whole bunch of different plugins and plugins to source content from different places and to use things like Google Analytics. And the problem with these is a lot of them aren't very well maintained. So if you pick one of these less popular ones, it's not really well audited. So one of these, you can just upload this off your GitHub and you don't really have any guarantee that it's going to work. I remember this one plugin that didn't work because it was still made for Gatsby version one. And when Gatsby version 2 came out, it broke a lot of things with that, so you can no longer use the same plugin that you would before. So my site worked perfectly fine before, but if I wanted to upgrade it to Gatsby version 2 and get all these new upgrades and nice things, then I had to create a new plugin or migrate it myself over to Gatsby version 2. And it's just another point of failure as well. Sometimes you'll be building your website and it'll give you an error because of this plugin and you don't really know what's going on so you have to go into the source code yourself and see what's going on you kind of have to like maintain this guy's plugin for him to see what's going wrong and of course they're just these plugins are just made by people on their github so they don't always have so much time to like devote to this uh, it can be a full-time job like trying to keep up with all these issues and things that are going wrong so you can't always expect these plugins to be working perfectly either and that's just what I didn't like about it. There's just so many points of failure. Like a lot of things can go wrong when you're building a Gatsby site. And for a site that's this simple, you know, I could replicate this with just like 20 minutes of HTML and CSS. And I shouldn't be having these small little problems when I'm just trying to create a basic site. Now, don't get me wrong. Using Gatsby JS is going to be a lot better than using some old gen website framework like WordPress that stores everything in a database and has these bloated jQuery libraries to do everything. Obviously, it's going to be a lot better than that, but there's so much, so many much better options that you have nowadays that I don't really see a reason to use Gatsby for myself anymore. So there's a lot of different options, but one I've been looking at is Hugo which I might use to make my next website. And Hugo is just a static website generator that you just fill out some templates, you make like a small little theme, you say this piece is gonna go here, 
and then it just builds it to just HTML and CSS, nothing else. And if you want to add in some JavaScript, you can. I just throw in some vanilla JavaScript, unlike using something like WordPress, which adds in a bunch of external frameworks like jQuery. You can just do it with JavaScript. You don't need to bring in the whole of React in order to power it. Maybe you're a little bit more comfortable working in React than vanilla JavaScript. I know I am, but it's just going to make the site perform a lot better. And I know this is kind of a stupid example because this is just a small little website with nothing on it. So does 200 milliseconds more of page, weight, page load time really matter? It really doesn't, but once you're getting to bigger websites that are larger scale and you're talking about seconds and seconds of difference, and you got to think about people who are on slower internet connections. Not everybody has fiber internet running on a MacBook Pro with 16 gigabytes of RAM, you know? So you got to think about people who are running from rural connections or from third world countries that don't have the fastest internet. So that's basically why I'm not planning on using Gatsby again. So like I said, it has some uses for some specific use cases. Like if you were building a more complicated progressive web app, it could come in handy. But for the basic use case, like building simple content websites and blogs, it just doesn't make any sense for me. So that's why I'm no longer using it. So yeah, uh, expect to see a new website made with Hugo later on. I just like building personal websites, you know, it's, it's kind of a hobby for me. <laughs> so that's what I'll be doing.